uh, been an exciting 24 hours, this deal coming together. And it's, it's hard for me to properly articulate how excited we are uh, that there's a deal in place, that we're all fully back to work and looking for ways to build upon what we feel is a very strong team. Uh, we have players starting to show up at the complex today, as you may know, those of you who are still out there, uh, who I saw earlier in the week, looks like you are James. Um, and by Sunday, we hope to have just about everyone uh, in, in camp and, and ready to go. Obviously, uh, we've just been able to reconnect with our players in the last 18 hours or so. Uh, I expect there'll be a, a visa issue or two to work through, but uh, uh, we will keep you posted come Sunday about where everyone's at if, for whatever reason, they're not in camp. So with that, I'll throw it open to questions. All right, everybody, if you have a question uh, for Rick, uh, you know, the drill, raise your hand. Let's start with Scott Merkin. Thanks, Ray. Hey, Rick, um, you know, you've dealt with shortened spring trainings or abbreviated spring trainings then picked up spring trainings, unfortunately, in the past couple of years. How do you adjust for this time period and how does that affect your construction of an already pretty, you know, solid roster moving forward? You know, it, it, it is interesting, Merk, especially... Uh, the one element that is added into this, this obviously shortened onboarding for the season is the fact that we haven't been able to communicate with our players for the last hundred or so days. So we are still in the process of gathering exactly where they are physically in terms of their preparation and health wise. Um, I think the, the combination of the shortened ramp up the lack of uh, dialogue over the last few months, uh, as well as obviously our, our high expectations for this season uh, has created the expectation that pitching depth is going to be a, a priority. Uh, I think all 29 other clubs will probably say something similar in terms of trying to protect those very important uh, elements of the club. But Certainly from our perspective, being able to uh, start the season off with the depth we need and, and build, uh, hopefully for over seven plus months of baseball, uh, having that pitching depth is going to be key. Is it way too early to talk six-man rotation, creative rotation approach, or is that something you hit kind of in the ground running? Uh, you know, we've had some internal conversations about that, uh, it, and Ethan and Hass and Tony have played around with some different ideas. Now, again, as we as we understand exactly, say, where uh, Lance Lynn or Michael Kopech or whomever is at in terms of their personal uh, pacing towards the season and building towards the season, that's sort of when, once we're face-to-face, -face, you can start talking about how viable some non-five-man rotation ideas may be. So a little, little premature, but it is something in general we've talked about. Amand. Hello, Rick. Uh, just what were the uh, last 99 days like we got up to? <laughs> uh, uh, well, it depends who you talk to. Uh, for, for me and I think the baseball staff, uh, certainly our scouts, it, it's been a little, little odd, not really knowing what to do with ourselves. You can obviously come up with different scenarios, but when you're not able to talk to other teams or free agents, uh, there's only so much you can do in terms of planning. Uh, if you talk to my wife, there's probably a little too much loitering around the house and interfering, interfering with her world. So she is perhaps as happy as anyone in the baseball family that uh, I'm departing for spring training tomorrow. Uh, but it, it was, it was, it could be frustrating because we all are by nature wanting to do what we can to make a team better. And obviously for the last few months, we haven't been able to do that. Uh, at the same time, it, it did give us a chance to sort of pause and reset and assess where we are as an organization and then give us a chance to perhaps appreciate some of the things we've accomplished here in the position we're in going forward. James. Normally you start off spring training by, uh, you know, uh, briefing us on who was injured um, because you haven't been able to kind of communicate with players during this time. 
Uh, are you kind of getting a uh, touch with everyone's at, at physically since I think we saw, you know, a team across town deal with a, a situation where a player is obviously injured while they can't communicate with him. Yeah. And, and if there was anything that was uh, abnormal or, you know, concern about a surgical element, we were, there was, a, they were allowed to reach out through team doctors. So we, we wouldn't be blindsided by anything like that. Uh, but we are, as I alluded to, we are currently in the process of really just understanding where guys are in terms of their builds. Uh, if they have had any, you know, minor health things along the way, obviously that's going to come to light here in the next few days. And uh, hopefully by the early part of next week, we'll have programs in place for everyone to, to build them over the next four weeks leading up to opening day. Obviously, uh, with no one having faced any game action this uh, at this point, and likely not doing that until, what, a week from Saturday, unless we schedule something before then. Um, it's, it's the, the build is going to be a little different this year than it's been uh, in previous years for the, for the starters and to a lesser extent to the, for the relievers. So we're going to have to be uh, careful with how we do this. We're again, in this for the long haul of uh, seven plus months. And uh, once we get a proper assessment of where everyone's at, we can adjust the plans accordingly. Yeah. Is this going to be more cautious or, um, maybe the start of the season, be a bit more uh, conservative with, you know, inning and pitch counts for younger arms like Kopech or, or others, uh, just given that it's a shorter spring training? Generically, I think you have to. Uh, shorter spring training and, and then really over the course of the next 10 days and two weeks is going to be a fair amount of effort and communication involved in making sure guys don't try to do too much too soon, try to make up for any lost time or, or force the issue. Uh, in terms of their preparation and, and getting them lengthened out. So it, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a challenge for all 30 teams, but quite frankly, you know, we're, we're thrilled to be in the position we're at right now where we're talking about baseball and we're talking about getting our guys ready for an exciting season. Cheryl. Hi, Rick. How you doing? Good, Cheryl. Good to see you. One of the things about the new deal is the limitations of options to down to five. And with your issues, particularly with pitchers and dealing with this, trying to ramp them up correctly and, and, and judiciously, how do you handle that? Uh, I think we will wind up planning for as much as we can in advance in terms of pacing out uh, those roster decisions. That said, you know, Cheryl, when you're in a year where you have high expectations, I think you're going to want to put the best people out there to win the game right in front of you. Uh, if that leads to a, a late in the season need to make a different decision because a guy's, you know, perhaps on his last option for the season, uh, then we'll have to adjust. That, that's kind of where the depth thing that I alluded to earlier comes into play. We want to make sure we have enough uh, viable options to, you know, have a handful of guys who are, are capable of helping us win at the major league level when needed. With that said, uh, are the phones ringing a lot trying to fill some more roster spots? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's funny. It, it's we're obviously in the process, as I said, communicating with our guys, getting everyone out there and, and preparing for how we're going to get ready for opening day in Detroit. But it's also like the winter meetings are going on at the same time in terms of the, the amount of dialogue, the conversations with agents, other teams, uh, you know, late into the night last night. And then uh, once again, they pick up again this morning. So there is that uh, sort of excitement that you get in December combined with the excitement you get in February when you're reporting to camp. So it's a, it's, a, it's unique and interesting and exciting time. And, and, and look, by, by nature, it, even if we had had a normal off season, we'd be sitting here in March for ways that we could potentially tweak a roster and get better. We obviously are aware that there's ways to improve this roster as it currently sits, uh, even as good as we, we feel about it right now. Um, so it's nice that there is that fluidity in the market going on right now to perhaps provide us with the, the chance to get better. Daryl. Rick, uh, there's, uh, there's been some uh, discussion about, um, you know, what your needs might be uh, beyond the pitching staff. 
uh, second base is thought to possibly be one, right field, another. Um, are you prepared to go forward with what you have there now, or are those a couple of areas that you see uh, calling for uh, improvement or upgrades? We're prepared to go forward with the roster we have right now. However, we are fully aware that there's places where we can get ourselves better, uh, pitching staff and position player wise. I did allude to, uh, again, for various reasons, idiosyncratic to this season and, and where we're at today, that the pitching concerns may be a little heavier on our mind than the position player side of things. But generally, if there's a way to improve the club, we're going to exhaust those opportunities here over the next few weeks. Uh, I know, you know there was some uh, understandable expectation that the second the lockout was lifted, that there were going to be all sorts of deals and a feeding frenzy, sort of like we see in uh, some of the free agencies in, in other sports. Uh, that said, given the fact that we weren't able to communicate with agents and other clubs, I'm, I'm not surprised it's been a little bit slower than anticipated at this early stage, but I think it also means that this is probably going to continue at this pace or continue to have these dialogues and chances to improve likely leading right up to the opener. Vinny Duber. Hey, Rick, uh, uh, when we talked to you a, a few times in November and right before the, the lockout ended, obviously you said that you, you guys were still thinking through some of the approaches that you were going to take to, to certain players, to certain moves going on, you know, on the other side of the lockout. Given that you had three months to think about it, how has some of that, uh, how did you guys kind of spend your time kind of figuring out uh, an approach to take now and now that that opportunity is here? We had all sorts of different scenarios mapped out. Uh, what will happen if we're able to acquire this player? What does that lead to here? Sort of a, you know, plan A through plan, I don't know, R <laughs> in terms of different scenarios about how this would go uh, in reality it's only been the last 18 hours that we're able to sort of see what's possibly viable and what's not. Uh, I guess the, the best way to put it is uh, we know we have a team that's very capable of winning a championship as it is, but that's not going to stop us from continuing to explore every different avenue to improve the club. And when, you know, it's easy for us to sort of do that in our offices and, and you know, and, and out at minor league mini camp or whenever we're able to sort of gather as a group of staff members. Uh, but really, it's now you, you blend those plans with reality here over the, the next several weeks. And, and again, it, it, we're, we're, it's nice that we have the opportunity to get better now, uh, regardless what happens between now and opening day. Uh, it's going to those we're going to continue to explore those opportunities well into the season and through the trade deadline. It, it's, uh, we know, we know where we're at as an organization right now and, and finding a way to get better is, is not going to stop uh, tonight. It's not going to stop in, in a week once we start getting in the games and it's certainly not going to stop come opening day. You mentioned that some of those, you know, some of these moves are around the league, but also with yourselves might, take all the way up till opening day to, to build these rosters. What kind of challenge does that present bringing in new players and new pieces with not a lot of time to get acclimated to, to not only you guys, but just the season in general with, with how they've had to be on hold. Yeah. I mean, look, we're all in the same boat, all 30 clubs. And I think on both sides, player and team side, everyone's just excited to be talking about baseball and, and getting going again and trying to, how we're going to compete and how we plan to win. Uh, so sure. There's going to be challenges in terms of, integration or, or getting guys up and running to the level we need. Uh, easy, Hugo. Um, but it's not unique to us. And those are, we'll take those problems over what the perceived problems would have been a couple of days ago. Jesse Rogers. Hey, Rick, just kind of a follow up to all that conversation. Um, so do you, you don't think like, guys are going to rush to get into camp in terms of like free agents and stuff like it, they're thinking more about the regular season than getting in by Sunday and Monday. Cause I know some agents were worried that there'd be a squeeze. They'd have to take the first deal they get, but you sense guys are going to shop around still and take some time. We'll see. It's been 18 hours, basically. Uh, there were certainly uh, 
agents last night who were receiving offers uh, from various clubs. So it, it very much could be you start seeing some things uh, occur as soon as today. Uh, that said, uh, my, I was more alluding to the fact that uh, you know, once the lockout was lifted at whatever time it was last night, the fact that there wasn't the flurry of like NBA or NFL deals that you tend to see when free agency starts in those sports wasn't a, wasn't a great surprise. There were still conversations that had to be had, both externally, obviously, with, with agents and, and other clubs about trades, but again, uh, getting a true assessment about where your own players are and, and what you can expect from them going forward. What... Um... Can you tell us what time your first call was? Or was it to a GM or an agent? Like, did you have somebody in mind I need to get a hold of as soon as this is over? Yep. Uh, Mark Gonzalez. Hi, Rick. Um, I know this is the third choppy spring training we've encountered, and you made some changes in your medical training staff to kind of address some of the injuries you had. And I know a lot of other teams had the same injuries, but – do you feel at least more optimistic going into this season in terms of preventive maintenance and ways to kind of uh, avoid these, you know, have a, a good blueprint? Yeah, definitely feel good about the blueprint. Definitely feel great about the staff, the support, the technology, the planning uh, that's all in place to support and promote player health. Uh, again, there's going to be some unique challenges to this season in the uh, preparation for spring and for the season that lays ahead that every team's going to face. And unfortunately, there's also a degree of randomness in terms of when some of these injuries occur and, and how. So we're going to be as cautious as we possibly can as we ramp these guys up and get them ready for the season. And uh, we all feel very good about the support that surrounds them starting, uh, starting today when they show up. Bruce. Hi, Rick. Nice to see you. Hey, Bruce. Good to see you, Rick. Good to see hey, you as well. Can you hear me, Rick? Hello. Hey, Bruce, your audio is choppy. We'll come back to you. Can you hear but me? It is good to see you, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. All right, Bruce, try uh, again. All right. Um, first of all, um, it, it appears that if you do want to make some trades, that there are teams that might match up pretty well with you as far as um, younger talent in your organization that you might not have to go off to your major league club. If, if that is the case, and again, that's only my assumption, uh, you do your own work, I do mine. Um, <laughs> would, would you say that there's, there's opportunities out there to uh, improve your, your pitching if uh, you want to go in that direction with some of your uh, minor leagues? Is, is there an opportunity to make trades for potential pitching help? Is that the yeah, I mean, do, you think, do you think there's good matchups for you with the teams that have pitching inventory? I mean, we do. And we had obviously dialogue with them prior to the lockout and have revisited some of those conversations. In the end, I think from the trade standpoint, everyone's sort of taking a beat and reassessing the potential fits and, and seeing what uh, the alternatives truly are as we get headed into camp and, and, I certainly feel like from a trade capital standpoint, if, if that's what you're getting at, we have the ability to make the deals uh, or make deals to address our needs at the major league level. The question is just whether we're going to align with the other clubs. Uh, my, my second question is, have you been informed by major league baseball, if there'll be a, a taxi squad or additional, um, players available as far as the roster goes as of yet that was something they were going to revisit and once spring training was up and running they obviously had some more immediate bigger fish to fry over the last few days but there is a there is a plan to revisit uh april rosters and plans for the early part of the season in the next few weeks you expect that to be the case i mean we'll see it's too too soon unfortunately to say thank you mike berman Hey, Rick, I got a lot going on at home here. I'm going to spare you the, uh, the video element. And that mean, that's just, and to be clear, that's just two boys and two dogs running around. Um, what, you know, you talked about 
the championship expectations. Um, obviously, you guys have, you know, gone from that rebuild mode to making the playoffs in back-to-back years. And now, where's your head at? Do you feel like, is it get to the World Series or bust? Win the ring or bust? I know there's so much randomness that comes with a baseball season, but how would you kind of characterize your guys' specific expectations for this season, given what you've accomplished over the last couple of years? You know, Mike, I, I, I don't think any of us would be doing our jobs properly. It, and by that, I mean the front office, players, coaches, if our aspirations weren't to win a championship and feeling that we, can, we need to do everything in our power to, to win the World Series in 2022. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not real good at feeling that we've met our expectations or satisfied our expectations if it doesn't end with us winning a championship. Now, obviously, a lot can happen health-wise, competitiveness-wise, various other things. Uh, that impedes your ability to, to win a championship in any given season. And ultimately we want to do everything in our power to put ourselves in the best position to, to do that. And if it doesn't happen, then we can assess sort of the reasons why on the back end. But I think right now uh, to a man and woman in the organization, the goal is to do everything in our power to win in 2022. American. Sorry about that. Hey, uh, Rick, I know no one in the world wanted these last 99 days, but you, in the short term here, you had a chance to really get a good look at your minor league system, you know, guys working out there. I know Tony was out there pretty much every day too, taking a look. Did, I mean, did I know you know what you have, but was it a good chance to kind of see the guys who are going to help now or, you know, in the soon, in the near distance and also a little further out maybe? No, it was, it was a, that was definitely a positive. We had more time and more resources around for the, the minor league mini camp as well as for uh, the minor league spring train over the last few weeks. And that includes not just being able to see the players, but also dialogue between major league staff and minor league staff and making sure that there's that continuity that we want between all the way up the chain, which you frankly don't always have the opportunity to do when big league camps going on simultaneously. Uh, you know, it was, it, it's been a nice several weeks or months actually going back to when they first got down there and seeing some of our young guys and the way they've improved and, and the physicality that has changed on some of them. Uh, as well as get to know from a makeup standpoint, some of the things that our, our player development and staff and scouts have been talking about for a while. So it's definitely, it's definitely been good for the organization. It's been good for all of us to, to uh, see these guys a little more closely than we've been able to in previous years. Um, so yeah, there's a little, little silver lining over the last 90 plus days. Just a quick take on what you've seen from Oscar Colas just in his short time uh, within the organization. Glad we got him. Glad we got him. Uh, you know, look, obviously, he hasn't played every day against competition in a while. So just like some of our other, uh, sorry, our other Cuban immigrants uh, in, in recent years, it's going to take a little bit to get him back, you know, in game speed and ramping up the way uh, and, and ready for everyday game action to perform at the peak of his abilities. But the, the tools are there. The physicality is there. Uh, makeup is strong, and uh, I'm glad he's one of ours. James, uh, we bothered you about it at the GM meetings and before the lockout, <laughs> so why not check again? Is, has the 100 days given you any more chance to clarify what the role for Garrett Crochet might be this season between bullpen or starting or something in between? I mean, again, let's see where everybody's at over the next few weeks, especially Garrett. Uh, I think that you're going to see him use primarily as in the bullpen role. Uh, it may look a little similar to how, how Kopech was used in 2021 in terms of the occasional longer outing or the occasional spot start as needed. Uh, but uh, unfortunately today, the answer is probably the same as it would have been for going back to the GM meetings because 
want to see the player and where he's at and, and build a plan for him once once we're all together. Uh, obviously, you made some moves before the lockout, but now that the smoke is cleared to some degree and, you know, you know what the CBA is, is there any advantage or in having that knowledge uh, as you go forward in shopping? Uh, I think there's an advantage to knowing that we have four weeks to get ready instead of six plus and that we also, uh, again, are able to gather sort of where our players are from a from a progression standpoint. It's a little different. Uh, when you're filling needs in December and then something creeps up in January or February that changes your needs. Now we're sort of close enough to the season that over the next several days, we'll know exactly where guys are, which could impact uh, which acquisition path we follow. Next is a uh, Hyde Park's own Lawrence Holmes. <laughs> Rick, uh, two questions, one football, one baseball. Uh, the, fo the football question is the new GM of the bears has said that he's going to reach out to a bunch of the other teams because he likes to get feedback cross sports wise wondering, has he reached out to you? And if so, would you be uh, okay with talking to him? Yeah. I, I sent Ryan a note uh, when he was hired and gave him my contact information, cell number, email, all that so that we could connect Uh about each of our organizations, but also on a personal level, just, you know, having raised kids here. And I know he's got young children and, and may well settle into the area. So I reached out to offer any help or guidance I could along those lines as well. We have not connected yet. Obviously, he's been pretty busy. I've been quite the opposite, but he's been pretty busy. So I suspect that will happen uh, at some point once we get a little more into the summer. Okay, cool. The second question is, what do you see as the pros and cons of the new playoff format? Uh, look, more teams getting in gives you an individual club, more shots on goal to win a championship. We've obviously seen years where it's been, you know, last year was the number three seed that broke through. We've seen years that the uh, wild card has broken through to win a championship, and this will give more opportunity to, to more clubs, um, which obviously includes us, our I, certainly this year, and I would hope every year our aspirations are to win the win the division and put ourselves in a strong position for postseason seeding. Uh, but if there's every years where we're, you know, a little closer to, to the final spot as opposed to winning the division, then good. You get in, you get hot, and you might find a way to bring home a ring. Uh, certainly should increase excitement along uh, in various in more baseball cities and more baseball fandoms. Uh, throughout the summer and into the early fall, which obviously is a, a positive. Uh, again, it, I, from, from a 2022 White Sox standpoint, uh, the first goal is to, is to win the division. And, and therefore, the expanded playoffs wouldn't necessarily come into play for us. Uh, seating obviously would matter, but seating's always mattered to us. And we're going to do everything in our power to put us in the best spot. Cool. Unless uh, anyone else raises their hand, looks like our last question will be Bruce. Uh, go ahead, Bruce. Rick, uh, what type of benefit is it for the you and the organization, and and uh, certainly Kenny and um, and Mr. Reinsdorf to have Tony and Ethan in their second year and no longer in that uh, keen observation mode of just fitting in and doing your job at the same time? Now, just an integral part of the club. Yeah, I think that is important that the continuity in the staff and becomes even more essential given the shortened spring uh, and given you would hate for, you know, having the aspirations that we have this year and our guys, our staff having not been able to build relationships with the players over the course of the off season and put on top of that a shortened, shortened spring uh, that would create a, more challenges than uh you're looking to have in any given spring. So I, I, it's definitely a positive. Obviously, uh, Ethan's reputation last year preceded him with many guys in our clubhouse due to his relationships with, with Lucas and others. Uh, Tony, you know, throughout the game, uh, obviously uh, uh, revered and no real concerns about how he was going to uh, run his camp. But I do think given the, the challenges of the past several months and the shortened spring that lies ahead, having uh, already established those relationships and familiarity with our club is, is going to be a nice positive. 
All right, there are no more uh, hands raised. Rick, thank you very much as always for your time. Uh, we'll be seeing you soon, probably on Zoom and in person. So appreciate it. Sounds good. Look forward to seeing you all. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll have Hello. these. We'll have this uh, file posted uh, fairly soon, so anyone that needs to download it can do that. And uh, just keep an eye on your emails for any correspondence from our department in terms of upcoming availabilities, credentials, and various timings uh, as camp uh, gets open in the next couple of days. So uh, shoot us any questions if you have them. Thanks, everybody.